But today we got something a little different. Stormcat uh, generator from Harbor Freight. It's a Craigslist line. It doesn't have any output, but the engine runs smooth as silk. Let's see if we can find out what caused it. <laughs> All right, let's get to working on this thing. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, start on the outside and work our way into the depths of the machine, only going in as deep as I need to go to get this thing to work. Um, the uh, generator has been around for a long time um, in various paint jobs at, at Harbor Freight and such, but by a lot of other manufacturers, other companies selling this same thing. Uh, what we was known as basically badge engineering, uh, slap a new decal on it and call it a different product, but there's a lot of them around. And they've got a history, pretty good history of what fails on these things. So we're going to work with the, the history of, the, of that we've seen. There's a lot of articles written on it. There are a lot of YouTube videos on them. God knows I've watched a lot of those things. So we're going to start with those items that those people have been seeing on them and assume most likely that's what we're going to see. But there's a lot of failures in these, this particular type of generator that uh, will, put, will send us down a lot of different roads. So we'll start at the very beginning. We're going to start the outside with the one failure that all generators or all brushless generators tend to have. And that is when you first fire the thing up, it needs some kind of stored energy in order to trigger the internals of the generator to start working. I mean, after all, we have no brushes or anything in here making contact on the commutator and the rotor spins on the inside, or in that case, we call it an armature. Um, it needs to be electronically and magnetically triggered. So what we're going to do is this process they call flashing. Now, there are three procedures, and I'll show you those procedures. We'll go with those. And once we do those, then we'll make the next step based on what we find. Right, okay, in order to do this, we're going to use a couple tools here. We're going to be using a grinder. We're going to be using a uh, drill. You're going to need to have some uh, gloves. Very important because if you get this thing fired off while you're spinning this, this drill, could be could be dangerous, could be uh, very painful. What we're going to do is we'll be plugging this in while the generator is running then with our gloves on we're going to take this thing and spin it in the reverse direction what this is going to do is it's going to back feed a signal through here an electrical signal through here that will try to energize the system if that one doesn't work this is basically the same thing but it's just with a different item and it's easier to work with this you take the grinder and then you're going to drag the grinder in the reverse direction. And this spins much easier than that does, so you get a lot more pip out of this here. If you get this, you might just try this first. After that, we will be using a battery, and I will show you that when we get to that point. those did the trick. So we have one more ace up our sleeves. Now for this test what we're going to do is we're going to actually inject a 12 volt signal into the plug outlet, the 110 outlet or 120 outlet on the uh, face of the uh, uh, generator. We'll plug this into the generator. 
this battery pack here is a 12 volt battery pack as you can see we got 12 volts right up there um, you can use a regular car battery whatever I just happen to have this handy and what we're going to do is just momentarily turn this on turn it off that's going to send that signal back into the uh, generator and then we'll see what happens. If it comes back to life, then that's another way of flashing it. I don't have a lot of hope for that in this particular case because it didn't respond to either of the other two. But let's give it a shot and see. All right, I'm going to get this thing started here. Once I get it started, I will be taking and do the test. I will take that drill and just stick it into the uh, outlet there. This had multiple outlets. I could put a light or something in there. We could just watch it come to life. Now let's get this thing started. And I'll go. All right, here we go. You can hear, hear it drop down as it received the signal, but nothing responded. We open this thing up. We'll take a look and see what's going on. Okay, before we get into tearing this thing down, let's review the uh, three tests we just did. The first test was with the drill. Um, you would be pulling the trigger, and you want to rotate the drill in the opposite direction that the drill is set to go. Uh, on the uh, grinder, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to set the tr pull, pull the trigger or set the trigger to the on position and rotate it in the opposite direction that it would normally turn. Now, on this here, when we did the battery test, if you'll notice there are some slots here. One slot is longer than the other. The short slot is going to take the positive side of the battery. The long slot will take the negative side of the battery. All right, let's get into tearing this thing down. Now we're going to take a look at this condenser, which is what I actually really believe is the problem on this thing. Right here is a condenser which runs to one set of the coils inside the uh, generator. The, this is your power feed for your uh, 12 or one, 120 outlet and then up here on the other side it runs to the other side of the coils inside there. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a screwdriver that's got a, a insulated handle on it and you're going to just cross these. Short this out from this terminal to that terminal. As you notice nothing happened there so that would basically tell me that that thing is not working. You normally would get a snap, a pop, as you're discharging it. Now, I'm going to set my meter up here. And we're going to have it set to the condenser. This condenser is an 11 microfarad condenser. And we're just going to come across it here. It's showing close to 11 microfarads. That's within range. Let's move this panel out of the way. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to check the coil winding. There's a couple of them in here. One for the that runs to the back side of that condenser I showed you. And then there's this white plug right here. This one runs to the uh, 120 outlet that you plug uh, your accessories in when you want to operate this thing. We've got this plugged into the... Uh, plugged across here and we're checking the uh, rate the homage on it uh, it's going to be on your meter that'll be the like the inverted horseshoe it's showing that we've got some continuity there so that's a good uh, good sign now what we want to do is while we've got this thing connected touch one of the probes to ground it should stay reading over low over over limit and what have you or ol if that number were to change that would mean we have something short circuited inside but we do not. Now we're going to do the same thing with this white connector here in this particular case, which is your 110 connector or 120. And we have continuity there too. And we have no short circuiting. So essentially it's fairly healthy. Now we're going to do another test here in a second. I'm going to hook it up and I'll be right back with that. All right. Now what we do here is we're going to have this set to the voltage and it's going to be the AC voltage, and you'll notice that the AC voltage has a little swiggly marks over it. We're going to plug that into, the, in this case, the two blue wires, but these are the wires that went to the back of the 
condenser. We're going to put it in there and we're going to be looking for some voltages here. Let me see if we get this started and we'll go from there with it. And we have some voltages. As you can see, we had voltages coming out of both sides of it. So essentially, it tells us there's probably pretty good health in the windings and coils inside here. So at this point, I think what we're going to end up doing, before I tear this thing all apart, I think what I'll end up doing is getting one of these. They're rather, rather inexpensive, 10 bucks or less in most cases. So get one of those, and once I have the condenser, We'll get back on this thing and see what happens. I don't want to open this thing up if I don't have to, but if I do, I will. Okay, I got that new condenser or capacitor as the non-automotive people like to call it. And uh, I installed it and lo and behold, it didn't work, believe it or not. But you know, the test results indicated that that was the next step to take. And of course, I didn't want to tear anything apart. So anyhow, we're gonna tear it apart now and then I'll get back with you and show you what I've got. Okay, here. we get this thing apart. And uh, there's a trick to getting this thing off, and I want to show you what that is. There's a couple ways you can do this. One is if you look right in here, that hole, you'll see it's threaded. Now you can get a, uh, in a uh, what appears to be a metric bolt for that, and put it in there so it goes down in a ways. Then you can just measure this here once it's down inside, how far it goes to contact this. So you'll take what it basically is what's sticking up, measure it, and then you want to cut. Measure, you'll get measure it, and you want to cut off just a little bit. That way, when you push this thing through, put this bolt through here, you tighten it. The atom will push against the face of this here. Now you want to make sure that the the diameter is wider than this here. That's one way, but there's an easier way. I'll show you real quickly. Put this in here and you back it off a ways. Then you take yourself a brass hammer. Don't use a regular hammer, but take a brass hammer and smack it hard while holding up on this here. And you want to reach in deep because this thing is plastic. Just smack it a few times, it'll come loose. But you don't want to have this completely out so that if you do, this whole thing will fall. So you want to just smack a little bit. That uh, will cause this the... Uh, uh, crankshaft to separate. If you look here in the bottom, you can, see it's a, you can see it's a taper fit right here. This little taper fit here. And the crankshaft is tapered too. So that's pretty a simple way to do that, get it apart. Now, looking inside here, everything looks really good. And of course, I've already done the homage ratings on this here. Here, everything looks good. I was originally uh, thinking when I looked looked inside with a with my boroscope that there was uh, some burned up wiring in here, but there's not. What we're looking at at this point now is I'm going to have to take these out. So there's a diode down here and there's a resistor. The same on the other side, and we'll we'll measure those. Once we measure those, we'll know whether or not we have any problems there. Everything else looks so good. All right, we got uh, a diode down in here and a 15 kilo ohm resistor, and the same up here. What we're going to need to do is remove at least one side of these di this diode in the uh, resistor and then test each of those components and the same with the upper section there and test each of those components and then we're going to be able to check the winding and see if any of the windings are open at, at this point the windings are not grounded I've already tested that but I need to get these res this resistor and the diode out of the way so we can uh, test for uh, continuity through the coil each of the coils all right I've been taking a look at this thing a little closer if you'll notice a little shiny spot right there. Now, I'm just wondering if possibly when this thing was running that this might have 
you know, short circuited to ground to shut it, shut down the circuits and what have you. Um, this wire right here seems to be above it, so it's protruding farther. So I'm not. Sh I'm, I'm just beginning to think that this was just a nick when they put it together, but it's a solid wire. I'm going to insulate it when we put it back together, and we'll see what we can do. Hopefully, it's, that wasn't it. It'd be a shame of just that one little piece. And looking in here, I don't see anything where it would have touched. And this would have been the end down inside. I cannot see anything that shows that it's been rubbed against. Everything looks real good. Okay, I've been going over this thing real tight, real close here. And look what I did find. Right there. This was just lying against this stuff here. Right where the solder is, just kind of wedged in there. So when I did a ohm test, a resistance test on it, it showed that it had resistance through the coils. But when I started tinkering with it, it showed that it was not really always there. When it's spinning, I'm sure inertia has caused it to move away. Well, I will uh, fix that, and I'm going to change these diodes, because I, or not the diodes, rather, the uh, resistors. Uh, I have some of those, so I'll put some new resistors in it. The diodes test fine. Test continuity tests good between each of these coils, but it just wasn't making good contact here, it looks like. I happen to know this because this thing here is a little loose. You see how the, and it's only just the heat of it into this plastic where it melted into the plastic. So it looks like it's been moving. We'll deal with that. All right, we're done with this. We get this part all ready to go back into the uh, uh, generator. I replaced these resistors, both of them. And if you'll notice, I put just a slight, slight dab of epoxy on it to lock them in place so they don't swing around and move around in there. Those wires are quite delicate on it. Um, the other ones had a little something glue or something on it, so I just decided I would do the same. The uh, It was easier to replace the re resistors in this thing than it was to uh, take them all the way out. I just chopped the old ones out, did my measurement test that way. It was much easier to do, and then I just replaced them with these. I had these in stock. I have about 20 of them sitting around. I'll never use them all. Now, when it gets down to this point here, this is the main reason that we, we found that we were working on this, is this thing was broken loose here. It would not, this wire would not take to soldering. And I'm not sure what the material is, probably, and I didn't, couldn't test it because there's not enough of it there to get it out there, but I got a feeling that it's probably a copper clad aluminum. And when I cleaned this varnish off of this stuff here to uh, expose the wiring for soldering purposes, I probably took the, the copper clad along with it. Uh, I'm just speculating on that, but I think that's probably what it was. Now this here, if you'll notice, was the same thing that was originally over here. And when I took this one off, this thing kind of crumbled. It was more like an elect electrically uh, conducive, uh, conductive uh, epoxy. So what I ended up doing was getting some of this stuff, called stuff, stuff called wire glue. So it's made in America, and it's a, it's a messy black substance, and you mix it up just like you would epoxy, and he, it conducts electricity. And I used that on here. Then I did a little test on it to make sure it was... Uh, you know, not, not too resistive, and it wasn't. It was pretty close to what I originally started with, so we're okay there. Now, one other thing I did want to point out on this, and this is something that I've seen on some of these when people had them apart, but nobody's ever told me what it was. Right here, you see those black little uh, square here? And this little square right there? Those are very strong magnets. Just wanted to pass that on to you, just in case anybody's ever looked at it. So what is that? All right, let's get this thing back together, and then uh, I'll get back with you, and we'll see what, we, what the results are. I'm not going to go through the assembly of, of putting this all back together. There's enough videos out there that have that on it. Okay, right now I'm going to use this 12-volt battery again. We're going to direct flash this uh, new capacitor. There's the light. How it work? To, uh, explain to you what I did with that direct flash situation. Now, when I re replaced the uh, capacitor or condenser, whichever you want to call it, when I replaced it originally, I did the, the quick flash on it, and it didn't make any difference. You've got to keep in mind that there's no charge in this thing when it first comes out of the box. So you need to put a charge in it of some type. 
all you do is you take your 12 volt battery, connect one end here. While the thing is running with this connected, contact the other the terminal here. You can do it from two to three seconds. In this case here, you saw it, it was almost instantaneous, but it, two or three seconds is about all you need to really do it. And then uh, the, the, the uh, system will be excited, should be excited, should be ready to go. Anyways, that uh, finishes this baby. We got it working. And I'll see you on the next one. I want to thank you guys for uh, coming by. And <laughs>